Patch 14.5 is now alive and for once there are no direct changes to Kesa or ADCs. Though there was supposed to be some buff but sadly Mr. Freak said nope ADC is strong enough. Which is a pretty interesting statement when most ADCs are lagging below 50% win rate. But anyways, in today's video I wanted to summarize all the changes that happened from 14.3 to 14.4 in a nice guide. I'll be going over the Kesa matchups, builds and runes and of course like before I'll keep updating this guide over the season if there are any big changes that happen. And looking at PPE and the potential changes in 14.6 to the patch right after this one, I'm guessing that there will be a lot of updates coming soon. So if you don't want to miss out on any of this, make sure to subscribe and with that let's get started. So first off, let's talk about Kesa matchup. For this video I did make a tier list. Now I won't go over every champion because that would probably take way too long but I do want to mention a couple of them. Let's first go over the ban slash avoid. For me, there are only three. Driven, Samira, and Nila. These three are, in my opinion, the biggest counter to Kesa for different reasons. And who you should ban really depends on what type of player you are. If you are a new or casual player, then I recommend banning Driven. He's her natural counter for years now due to his high damage and poke and overall is just really annoying to play into. But if you're a Kesa main or planning to play Kesa a lot, I do not recommend to ban him. Since it's not impossible at the moment you play the lane right, and he's a great way to learn how to deal with aggressive player bot lane. So if you're a Kesa main or OTP, I recommend banning Nila or Samira. Me personally, I ban Nila. For the simple reason is that not only she's OP, but with Samira, she has mechanics that can simply deny Kesa burst window, which represent most of the champion damage. Not to mention, they can easily sustain backup. Champion in the hard tier like Caitlyn and Ash all have tools to basically keep you away from ever taking a good trade and those matchups in the end are really support dependent. Having a Nautilus, a trash support can really make a difference in how the lane will go. Now why is Smolder in the OK tier? The reason is pretty simple. He's really really squishy and doesn't have much tools to keep you away from simply destroying his HP. So if you can get some pressure in the lane with support, the lane phase shouldn't be much of an issue and you can even get a couple easy kills if you can land your burst. Finally the easy tier are champions that really shouldn't be much of an issue and are mini skill matchup is where it's really up to who is the better ADC. And with that said, let's now talk about the Kesa builds in 40.5. Now like before, I'll go over the, her different styles and in season 14, she has 4 ways to build. AD crit, hybrid, lethality and AP Kesa. And let's start with AD crit, but before that, let's quickly mention the runes you should be going. On this, there is really zero changes, it's still between Little Temple and Hello Blades, both being really good and it really depends on your preferences. HOB gives you a strong early game and is perfect for players that like to be really aggressive in lane and go for trades, but does have a weaker mid game and if you play hybrid or AP, you might run into some mana issues. Meanwhile, RT has a weaker lane phase but way stronger scaling and since you have access to presence of mind, you can prevent much mana issues in the mid game. So if you're someone that prefers playing when you have items, this is most likely better for you. Just remember something, between L Blaze or Little Temple, there isn't much of a difference in terms of power, so really pick which one you prefer the most. Don't force yourself to pick HOP because you saw a pro player use it while you don't really like being aggressive in lane. Alright, build time. For AD Crit Kesa, not a lot has changed, but one build did perform really well in the past couple weeks and that is Static Bridgeblade Turnus. This is most likely the most comfortable build for AD Kesa with a cheap key evolution and even though yes, Static Passive doesn't give much, it's the 50 AD and 30 attack speed that just makes a big difference. One variation of this build I need to mention is Navary instead of Turnus. This is perfect when you're facing a lot of tanks because it allows you to build LDR Force. Remember, you cannot build both LDR and Turnus. So if you're facing a fed shogat you don't want to have Terminus or it will be difficult to do damage. The second build that is also really good is Kraken Ridgeblade Terminus. It's the same idea as the static one but with Kraken Slayer and overall I think it, this build is best when you have a lead in the laning phase because you are delaying your crew evolution. So if you have a rough lane it might not be the best option but if you are fed going for Kraken Slayer will help you snowball the lane even harder. Finally, the last build I want to mention is the underrated build but has seen some good light in pro play, it's Kraken Sayer into Navri into Phantom Dancer. This is the classic ADC build that Kesa has been building for the past couple of seasons now and is still really good. It's the best anti-tank build since not only you have access to LDR forced but also Navri gives you access to lower CDs. Just remember something, is that this build is not the best into squishies and bruisers and you do want to have some peeling like another support or a trash support. And there you go, that should cover everything you need to know about AD Crit Kesa. Before we continue, I need to mention two things. One, I did not include Terminus 2nd. I did go over my reasons in this video, but still they are, even though it did get buffed, it still didn't fix the issues of Terminus 2nd. When you build it, it just feels bad and the only good thing about it is the extra armor and MR which maybe can make a difference versus bruisers, but it's really specific and overall, I just think 
it's better to build it third. Second point is about AD Eclipse. I really like Eclipse for a hybrid or AP, but for AD, not that much. Since if you need a quick evolution, static exists, and if you get fed, Kraken exists. Going for AD Eclipse really depends if you really like this item over other options. All right, hybrid time. Now, the biggest change that did happen over the couple patches is the end of Stormraiser. Yes, even though Red said it was a buff, it really wasn't. And with that comes my second favorite build of the patch, which is Eclipse Kraken Nasher. One of the biggest issues that come from building hybrid is that you need to build Nasher, and it doesn't feel super good and only gets full value when you finish the actual item. This is where Eclipse comes in clutch. Since paired with Kraken Sayer, you have a super strong 2 item spike that will burst down any squishy target and easily buy you enough time to get your Nasher and W Evolution to keep selling into the mid game and late game. For the fourth item, it really depends on the game. You can go for Shadow Flame if you need more DPS, Creep Bloom for the tanks, or even Dead Cap if you're fed. The second option you can go for is Static Ridge Blade Nasher. Compared to Eclipse, Static is way better when you're facing a really difficult lane or a lot of book, like Ash, Caitlyn, or Senna. It allows you to clear the wave with more comfort while you get more items to scale into the mid game. As for the fourth item, it's the same logic as Eclipse, so Crib Bloom, Shadow Flame, Dead Cap, or even Zonyas. So overall, Eclipse is better when you can actually fight in lane and snowball with a lead, while Static is better when you have a really difficult lane. For lead between AD and Hybrid, Hybrid is better versus Squishies like Assassins or Bruisers because of the high burst you can do and being allowed to build items like Zonyas, while AD is better versus tanks and when your team can peel you. Now let's talk about Lethality Kesa. Now for this, there are sadly no build I can recommend for this time and it's for a simple reason. The main reason why you would go Lethality in the first place like in season 11, 12 or 13 was because it gives you a cheap Q evolution that was just better than other options. But in 2024 things have changed with a new change to Static and Eclipse being cheaper the advantage that this style had over other builds really was reduced to the point that now even Eclipse Q evolution is now cheaper than a normal Lethality Q. Not to mention that Riot has planned for 14.6 to nerf Dirk Lethality soon. So yeah, at the current state, I don't see a reason why you would want to build a Tal Tikesa over anything else. The only build I think can still work would be Kraken into Collector into Rageblade, but I'll be honest, it only really works if you want to snowball the lane and you are really really fed. Because apart from that one situation, I don't see a reason why you would need to go Lethality. And finally, let's talk about AP Kesa. Now, I'm gonna cut this into two parts. One will be focused on bot lane, AP Kesa, and the other one will be focused on top lane and mid lane AP Kesa. The reason why I'm doing this is explained more in this video, but TLDR, there has been a lot of talk around Mamine bot lane recently, and as someone that built Mamine Epicasa for years now, I can tell you right now, playing my mini bot lane isn't a safe pick whatsoever. Especially when other more comfortable options exist like Eclipse. I'm not saying that my mini Epicasa cannot work bot lane, but there are only a couple specific situations where it's actually better over Eclipse. This is why I don't recommend it. But first off, let's talk about the runes. For Epicasa bot, I recommend running HOB since you won't get any value from the attack speed of Little Tempo since you poke W non-stop. In terms of secondary rune, you really have two options here. One is to go for the inspiration tree if you need more sustain in lane or second precision tree because it gives you access to presence of mind which is really really nice when you start poking with w the second rune page i recommend running is the fleet footwork one it gives you access to the precision tree directly and allows you to go for inspiration second or sorcery second depending on how rough the lane is and if you need the added sustain and gold from boots and cookies overall it's perfect into poke lanes because it allows you to sustain now time for the build for apk sabot first one is going to be the strongest version which is eclipse plus longsword plus student's companion plus orzen's focus for a cheap option or shadow flame if, you, if you're fed or crib bloom if you face a big tank or enemy builds mr by the way when you build crib bloom or isn't focus you want to run sorcery boots and when you run shadow flame you want to go for the ionian boots to maintain a, to maintain a good amount of haste eclipse will give you evolution at level 6 after you buy longsword you can sell it later at level 10 and you can sell your d blade at level 13 and with the added shield it gives you it makes winning trades really really easy while giving you the AD and DPS to still fight even though you're going for AP Kesa. This is really similar to the static AP Kesa tech that was really OP last season. The second way to build is to go for Eclipse plus Nasher plus Shadow Flame with attack speed boots. It's less strong than the first build but it gives you access to attack speed which can be crucial in games where, where your team lacks any real DPS like Ayone, Ayi, Yasuo, Azir, and so on. So going for Nasher allows you and your team to still do objectives like Baron and Dragon with ease. Now for solo lane Kesa, that means top or mid, in terms of runes you want to run a fleet footwork like I said before or the first strike rune page. 
It's less to say heavy than fleet, but gives you even more damage and gold generation. It's perfect in lanes where you face many characters and they aren't super aggressive, like Orn, Maokai, Kassadin, and so on. In terms of build, here you want to build Mamune. Since you're playing a soul lane, you, you have no support to deal with, so you can easily play weak side. So Mamune plus Zudan's Companion plus Orzen's Focus for a cheap option, or Shadow Flame if you're fed, or Kribloom if you face a big tank or enemy builds MR. And the same logic for the boots, Sorcery for Kribloom, Orzen Focus, and Haste Boots for Shadow Flame. And there you have it. This should cover everything you need to know about Kesa in 14.5. Looking at the changes that are already happening in 14.6, I hope this guide can last more than one week. But anyways, if there are any changes, I'll make sure to update the guide anyway. Alright, with that said everyone, I hope you all enjoyed this video. Make sure to subscribe and I'll see you all next time. Bye bye.